Welcome back to the home lab and today we're going to have a bit more fun with my EE8 radio kit. We're going to take it on a field trip. So, as I'm sure some of you will remember, a while ago I did a video on the contents of this wonderful 1960s EE8 Philips kit, and the comments you uh, sent in were absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed reading every one of them, and some of the amazing careers you've had after playing with this uh, when you were a young child. Anyway, um, many of you said, now come on, build something, see if you can get the kit to work. And I got lots of suggestions, and the most common suggestion was, why don't you build the two transistor radio? So I thought, OK, let's have a go. And it worked. I was really pleased it worked, but it didn't work that well. It got an awful lot of interference here at home. And uh, I had some really good comments from some of you on how to improve it. Uh, things like make sure you've tightened the coil here on the ferro scepter so you've got better flux linking. And another comment which was really intriguing that said you're tied to a metal tap for your earth, but are you sure it's earthed? So I checked and it's got copper pipes all the way through the house until we get to where the water comes into the house. And would you believe it? The copper pipe has plastic joints on it, so maybe it wasn't very well earthed. So what I thought we'd do today is go somewhere where it's really quiet and there's not a lot of extra sort of digital noise from all the equipment in the house. And we'll make a few improvements to the antenna and definitely to the earth and we'll see what sort of signals we can get then. But just before we start, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you for supporting my channel and watching the videos that I make, and particularly for leaving some absolutely fantastic comments. I read every single one of them and I try and reply to every single comment that I get because I really value that part of the process. I enjoy making the video, but I'm really interested to hear what you get from it and your experiences. And this has been one particularly um, that has shown that out with all of you talking about your experiences of this kit. I also want to say a huge thank you again to PCBWay, who really helped me make these videos possible. As you know, uh, they make uh, circuit boards for your electronic projects, but what I'd like you to do is perhaps go to their website and look at their project of the week. So if you're struggling for ideas for things to build, uh, there are some easy ones there and some more complicated projects, and I'm sure those will give you some ideas for something that you might like to try. Anyway, I'm really grateful for their support, and I'm also really grateful for yours too. So now, let's get on with our radio. When visiting friends in the area, I often pass a disused World War II airfield. And interestingly enough, it's got a public road running through the middle of it. And it's in the middle of nowhere, as you might expect, because the old airfield takes up a huge amount of space. So I thought this would be an absolutely excellent place to take our kit a long way away from houses and cars, so we might get some uh, interference silence. It's a bit of a cool day today, so I'm going to go and get wrapped up, but do please join me on this EE8 two transistor radio field trip. It is amazing the amount of kit you need to take with you for this sort of thing, but I don't want to have to give up halfway through and return home and try it all over again. I've managed to get a rare break in the weather as it is, so let's get the car packed and take a short drive to a place that I hope will have very little of the radio noise we have here at home. Of those of you who drive England's country lanes will know, it's funny how you always meet huge 4x4s, which apart from never having a speck of dirt on them, are almost too big for the road, and Tesco delivery vans that definitely are. This all reminded me of the trip that I filmed a while back in my old Series 1 Land Rover, travelling around Wales. Have you seen that one? You might find that interesting too. There's still lots of aviation around, as there are a number of active military airfields close by. In fact, I just missed getting a shot of one of the RAF Juno helicopters that flew low and straight over the top of me with its landing light on. I wonder if they wanted to know what I was up to. On arrival, I got everything out of the car, and as I've said before, 
I was amazed by the amount of stuff that you need to take with you. It makes you realise that in a good lab, you can just lay your hand on anything you need, but out in the field, it's, if you haven't got it, you can't use it. So I've come out to a pretty remote area here. It's an old World War II airfield, but it's got a public road running through the middle of it. And I've just pulled off onto some sort of, I want to call it hard standing, but it's a rough area. And an old vehicle came rattling past and it was a landowner. And he was very nice and sort of, what are you up to? And I explained it to him. And he told me the whole history of the airfield and he'd been here for years and he was fascinated to see this radio kit. So it does make the point that if you want to perhaps nip onto uh, the edge of the road that um, might not be a public area, just talk to the owner and tell them what you're doing. And if it's reasonable, they're usually fantastic and you get to learn a huge amount more and things that you wouldn't have known before. So I'm really pleased that I bumped into Mr Williams. Having got most of the radio out and set up, I hunted for a good earthing point using an old screwdriver as an earth stake. It was not easy to string up the aerial, but I did the best I could onto a wooden part of the fence. With that done, I could connect the ends of the earth wire and the aerial wire to the radio itself. Well, that's absolutely incredible. I've come out here into the radio silence and I couldn't get my little Bravo valve amp to work. So I've got the old headphones out and I haven't even connected them directly. I've just kind of rested them on the wires and uh, have a listen. So there's Sir Keir Starmer answering some very difficult questions on Prime Minister's Question Time. And it's really, really clear. So um, this is so much better uh, than being in town with all the radio interference and all the digital noise. Um, it's absolutely crystal clear. And when I go off frequency, it's really quiet. You just hear radio static. So let's have a bit more of Prime Minister's Questions. That's fantastic. I can hear all the shouting in the House of Commons. So um, I can really imagine what it must have been like to be a child back in the day and have this maybe hidden away in your bedroom and you are secretly like a spy listening to uh, AM radio broadcasts. I've got that feeling back again and I hope some of you uh, have got it too. So what I'll do now is I'll do a little bit of a tune through so you can hear just how silent it is and how strong the radio signal is of Prime Minister's Question Time. Uh, sorry, I haven't got the little amplifier to work. Uh, might try that in a minute. So here we go. I want to be clear that what happened at the left ones is... OK, happened. so I've got the little Bravo no, amp sorry. working. Uh, lesson FJ, uh, get the right speaker for it. So the impedances are all wrong, so I've got the amplifier turned. Uh, it's right that they receive right up, but you should be able to hear it. So, uh, will, let's have you. a little tune. Firstly, the volume. Just as soon as we're able to do so. Becca Smith. Yeah. There we go. Later on this afternoon, and I'm then going let's to... just tune through to show you just how quiet it is out here. Steppo, this is the best time to buy kitchens. Ooh. With our biggest Radio 5 Live, I think. Oh, actually, is it? Because it's got adverts. Can you hear something, but I'm not sure what. That's a strong signal, isn't it? I'll make a copy of So there we go, huge success, really pleased with that, I'm really excited, it's just like being a child all over again, doesn't that take you back 50 years? Let's try the other one quickly, I'm going to be here all day aren't I, just playing with it. Oh adverts, we don't want adverts do we, this is exactly the kind of radio that we didn't want when we were kids, so um, okay, let's go back to the commons. 
So there you go, working beautifully, and there are your choices. You can have adverts for selling you modern products, or you can have um, a few grown-up adults having a massive row in the houses of Parliament. Well, thank you so much for joining me on this uh, wonderful uh, exploration of this radio. I'm so excited I've got it to work, and uh, it's way better than I'd actually thought. Um, I do definitely feel like a child all over again, and it seems a shame now to pack it away and uh, take it home. But um, I'm not all that interested in listening to uh, adverts or um, the grown men and women arguing with each other. So I guess uh, we'll um, pack it away now, take it home, but that's been an expedition that's been well worthwhile. Which is important. Excellent, excellent. So we heard at the very end of... So it's now time to pack away and get home. Electromagnetic elation aside, I really do need some lunch. So back from the field trip, warmed up and still buzzing from the fact that the radio worked so well. I did a little bit of research on which uh, stations we might be listening to. And in fact, uh, Prime Minister's Question Times is broadcast live from uh, BBC Five Live. And I had an idea that BBC Five Live was only sport. Uh, so now I know. And that was on about 909 kilohertz. And so I presume that was the, uh, the band or bit we were listening to. As far as the adverts go, I think that was a station about 100 kilohertz higher up. And I think that was probably talk sport. I, I'm not totally sure. Um, and I don't know where that's broadcast from. But the Recon radio mast is not very far away. So I'm pretty certain that really strong signal of Radio 5 Live and all those people arguing in the House of Commons was coming directly from the Recon. So that was successful. And if you want me to do another build with this kit, one of the other projects that you remember from your youth, do let me know in the comments. I've got a few ideas already and I really need to get an EE20 because I'd really like to build the organ. That would be a really fun one to do. Anyway, uh, it was a fantastic project and um, I really uh, love this little radio. And if I want to build another project, I'm going to have to take it apart. And I kind of don't want to. Um, it's something from the 1960s that has sprung back to life again. And I feel it's a, a sort of mortal sin to kill it off and take it apart. Um, but I guess I've got to do that. I mean, am I just being a bit uh, silly and sentimental about um, electronics? Maybe we'll have an awful lot of fun building something else. So thanks very much for joining me today on the uh, field work with this little radio. And I hope you kept uh, warm and dry inside watching the video. Um, I know I need to do a video on the actual circuit that I've used here and look at the original circuit diagram and explain how this two transistor radio works. And I'm going to do that fairly soon. I just need to get on and film it. But I, you know, like a young child, I was too keen to get on and build the thing and then get out there and uh, get it working. But we'll uh, deal with some theory fairly soon. Anyway, um, do please leave a comment. I'm always interested to hear what you've got to say and the kits um, that you played with uh, in your youth. And I'll make sure I read all of them and answer them. I'll also be doing some videos on some of the other kits soon. If you'd like that, I'd like to do some of the science fair and Tandy ones. And also particularly the ones that use Denshi blocks. If you remember those Denshi boards, which were a bit different from this, but really very clever and worked very, very well indeed. Anyway, as you know, I'll be making another video soon. So do please join me then. Fixing broken roads like Galley Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's right, the party opposite let roads crumble.